Hi there, it's Professor Monty, and now we're talking about multiplying and dividing radical terms with different indices. Okay, so the key here is we need to change everything to fractional exponents. Once we've done that, we can add or subtract exponents as appropriate depending on the property of exponents we're using. So let me give you a couple examples. Okay, I've got the third root of x times the fourth root of x. Well, the third root of x means x to the one-third power. The fourth root of x means x to the one-fourth power. So what I'm doing is I'm multiplying x to the one-third times x to the one-fourth. I have the same base. I can multiply these two things together, keeping the base, adding the exponents. Well, if I want to add these exponents, I can only add them if I have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator now while we're here. 3 and 4 both go into 12, so let's build those both up to 12. So I'll multiply this one by 4 over 4 and this one by 3 over 3. Multiplying straight across, I get x to the 4 twelfths, which of course is the same as x to the 1 third. And then I'm going to add to it this exponent right here, 3 twelfths. And so when I add those together, I get x to the 7 twelfths. And a lot of authors, a lot of instructors will be happy there. Sometimes they say, hey, don't leave a fractional or rational exponent. We still want it. We started in terms of radicals. Let's end in terms of radicals. Well, remember that 12 means the 12th root. So we'll do the 12th root of x to the 7th. And that's our answer. Okay, so it's like that. Let's try another one. A little bit more difficult. This time I'm dividing. So let's see. Again, I'm going to change these two rational exponents, fractional exponents. Well, this a is a to the first, but I've got a square root, which is really 2. So the square root of a means a to the 1 half power. And b to the third, that means b to the 3 halves once I take the square root. Right? The square root of b to the third, that's what that was. And over here, it's the 1 fifth power. So it's a to the two-fifths, b to the one-fifth. Remember, the number on the bottom of the fraction is the root. Okay, now I'm dividing, so now I'm going to subtract exponents. So let's see, with the a's, I get a to the one-half minus two-fifths. And with the b's, I get three-halves minus one-fifths. Three-halves minus one -fifth. And again, I need common denominators. So let's see, 2 and 5 both go into 10. So I'll multiply that by 5 over 5, and that by 2 over 2. I'm doing the same thing over here with the b's. 5 over 5, 2 over 2. Getting all the denominators to be 10. So let's see, I get a to the 5 tenths minus 4 tenths. And I get b to the 15 tenths minus 2 tenths. We'll continue that on down here. 5 minus 4 is 1. Keep the denominator. a to the 1 tenth. b to the 15 minus 2 is 13 tenths. So it's the tenth root of a to the first b to the 13th. Usually we don't put the 1. I'm just going to erase that. And that's my final answer. So kind of weird. I can actually multiply or divide radicals with different indices by changing them fractional indices or fractional exponents and building them up to a common indice. Okay, so a little bit of work here, a little complicated, but a little practice, and of course you'll get better and better.